we were practicing really well at the start. Then we had some bad games and then we lost confidence. It was harder to come back to the discipline. He's kicking that one off, maybe hoping to just get some summoners or some spells out of VTO, but he interrupts the first dash. That's going to be clutch. VTO pushed away, taken down. Oscar, the timing, absolute perfection. The pick onto VTO will end up costing them vitality. Hoping to get something back, the feathers out, but Noah off to the side. Uncontested, the knock up there. Cars, he's got no room to play. And surely this is it. Oscar Rinnan, eyes on the prize. It's the most kills and a best of five in LEC history. And it's Fnatic once again taking down Vitality, moving into top three in the LEC. They look really shaky. We will try to abuse this if they're not coming well shaped this week. Comes in safe today. LeBro flips him out once again. A pentakill for Ice as he cleans up the fight. Shale holds he's in at 4K the steal. He gets it. BDS just take it away to get you top three in the LEC. I'm really confident that we are going to take them. They usually don't really deliver in playoffs. Actually, I hope you guys choke because I want to go MSI. They are coming, obviously, to take those titles away from us. If someone wants to be our rival, we are welcoming that. Make us strong. We need to stay vigilant, stay humble, and take it game by game so we don't make the same mistakes as we did in the past. Will it be a flip to the side of the series? Who knows? Cap comes in, shoves there. It is a flip! BDS, you were the chosen one! And you betrayed us! G2! are still Europe's champions, moving to another grand final. This team is the region. I think against Fnatic, we are most likely favorites when G2 totally smacked them. If they want to take that series a sour level, that's fine, they will get stunned. The loser has about 60 days to think about everything before we come back for summer. Last year, it was tomorrow that BDS were denied their spot at MSI. They lost to Mad Lions Koi in the finals. It has been six years since Fnatic have gone to MSI. One of those teams' fortunes will change today. I'm Medic. I'm joined by Vedi and Dagda. I'm very honored to take you through the cast today. I am so excited to see these two teams face off. I think this is going to be an absolute banger. I know the desk was more favored on BDS's side, but we had G2 on Euphoria during the week. They were like, look, honestly, this is incredibly close. They favored Fnatic. I think this is some uh, series that could crash either direction, and I cannot wait to see it kick off. Frankly, I think we've got an interesting clash of styles. I think that the discipline that we have been lacking from Fnatic is often very evident in how BDS approach fights. I imagine that these team fights are going to be crucial along with how well these teams can set themselves up in the early game. And obviously, that is largely tied to the draft. We're going to be jumping right in. Vi and Nautilus already taken off the board. BDS on the blue side means that they will guarantee this first pick. My question is, where will this Zeri fall? We know that Zeri is a high priority pick for both of these AD carries. We've seen it prioritized throughout the LEC playoffs. Both AD carries have had it pretty consistently banned away from them. Who will get their hands on it today, if at all? These are very different bands than what I expected coming into this, though. The Jarvan was not something I thought we'd get to see. It says to me the chances are Ice is going to be expecting a Zeri band to come through, wants to go back towards something like the Jinx or a Varus, play that hyper-scaling carry, and doesn't want the Jarvan to interact. But also I thought it would be the Vi banned by Fnatic, because I expected BDS to want to get Shea onto Vi, so they can play the... Uh, or at least then they don't have to go back towards Volley Bear, and then Fnatic take away the Jax. So I'm surprised to see it's actually BDS that are banning the way. I mean, BDS is definitely looking at a Volley Bear and a Zeer priority pick here. Yeah. With the Rumble taken off the board, Kalista is, of course, available. But that is a champion that neither of these AD carries in particular prioritize when it comes to the draft. So I'm very curious as to what that first pick will be. Bear in mind, Rek'Sai also up something that Fnatic love to get their hands on early when it comes to the draft. Bear in mind as well, not pre-recorded drafts for our playoffs. So all these uh, picks are real time. Players have less time to discuss after the game, after the draft concludes, at least before the game starts. Talia, the first lock 
for BDS. First time we'll see Nuke on that in playoffs. Zeri and Rel immediately locked in for Fnatic. I feel like Fnatic have gotten everything that they wanted though in this draft. Realistically, Humanoid can still play the Azir into the Tilia. He's going to be perfectly fine. Uh, you don't have to worry about something like an Aurelian Sol or anything like that coming out. And you get that Zeri, which has been banned away pretty consistently from Noah and the Rel for Razor. This has been the champion that I think has been his best and has been denied from Fnatic so often over the course of this split. Zyra Khan in the bot lane for BDS. I think it's a very powerful two versus two. I'm curious to see. I mean, BDS clearly have confidence in Ice and LeBrov in terms of their ability to bring some agency into that bot lane. LeBrov, we know, is a big playmaker, looking to have impact on the map. We'll see how things pan out as we move into the second phase. The volley bear, unsurprising, going to be taken away by Fnatic. Yeah, I expected kind of to see that coming through. Uh, they've actually first picked this in their last series a lot of the time to try and get that for Shale. But probably going to be another, like, CC oriented band coming through here. And then you're kind of looking going, like say Maokai taken away. What do you pick then in the jungle for Shao that can facilitate the Talia when it comes to the flickbacks? Fnatic likely think, looking, as you say, towards one of those jungle bands. BDS can go towards top to make sure that Oscar Inan isn't on a comfort champion, at least not on an easy champion to pilot. Because Fnatic do have R5. They have the last pick of the draft, which means BDS will have to show their top lane hand before Fnatic have to lock in that top. So expect a top lane ban here from BDS. Fnatic then lock support or jungle, depending on where that rail is going to go. BDS then obviously round out their comp, and Fnatic have Oscar Inan or something safe, likely, in the top lane. I like the bans here from BDS really limiting the top lane tank pool available to Oscar. Cassante then becomes the, the standout champion that you obviously have your eyes on. The question is, do Fnatic want to blind that here? This would be interesting, because I'm about to say, one of the big things we've seen is that Adam has been practicing a lot of those more traditional tanks in solo queue. So it could have been, hey, we're going to go back towards a Gragas or something Ooh. along these lines, but actually going to be Oscar in and bringing out the Twisted Face, which I thought was going to be on the opposite side, because Adam has been practicing a lot, and it's looked really good for him. You also called Adam has been playing a lot of Callista top with True. Lethality, which is pretty good into the Twisted Fate. So we'll see if that comes out here. Obviously, does really change the way your team wants to play. So BDS would have to put a lot of pressure on okay. that. Instead, it's Yasuo locked in the top <laughs> lane against Twisted Fate. Oscar Inan's first Twisted Fate of playoffs, not the sort of champion we'd usually see. And obviously, first, first Yasuo top for Adam as well. I mean, I think the hover of the poppy is absolutely perfect from Razork. I was thinking about what supports you can pick right now. And it feels like that with uh, Limited options into the Rakan with a Zeri. You don't have the best, so just pairing the Rel alongside it, I think, makes the most sense. Then you get Razork, one of his most comfortable champions throughout his entire career, and it's into a dash from literally everyone <laughs> except for the Zaya and the Talia. So all those engage tools are going to be are going to struggle to find those engages later into the game. Definitely agree with you there, Betty. Adam has played Yasuo once before in his career in top lane. It was against SK last spring. They lost that game. I will say, having watched the LCK series earlier on today, I do wonder if BDS might look for a lane swap into the Twisted Fate to try and put him behind. Obviously, the Yasuo pick into it does also work. Yeah, I think they just have such a strong bot lane that they can try and play around. Rel does really well into the Rakan. You will lose out on the pushing power because the Zaya will have the increase on uh, the pullback feathers on push but i still think you open up jun to play anywhere on the map with Razork. and honestly i think jun is the best roaming support that we have in lec right now he has been so good and was so crucial to the victory that Fnatic had over vitality and i want to see him have that impact here again when he comes into this series i think bds have great side lane options which i would say is out of character, but something we've been seeing more from them recently, where a lot of their strength comes from being able to shadow on the side lane, being able to create 2v1s or 2v2s and the, take those smaller skirmishes, whereas Fnatic are very much driven around playing more towards these team fights. While they do have some side lane options, the beauty of Yasuo being a counter into Twisted Fate is how well it scales into the late game. So, very interesting approaches from both teams for our first game of the split, of the series, I should say. He missed a few weeks there. Yeah. Here we are, into the first game of this lower bracket final. Winner plays G2 tomorrow in our grand finals and hooks their spot at MSI. Let's see how the team set up around the map. Early doors, looks like it's just going to be the standard five players in a line strategy. Just bouncing off of Eddie's point though, something that Fnatic has done pretty consistently is this overload a side lane and try and find a pick. It's something that Trimby brought to the team last year and we're still seeing Fnatic heavily go for it with things like the Talia. Hey as uh, oh, they would often bring it up and try and punish people over extended. We saw it a lot in the Vitality series as well. 
And I think this is actually a really good adaptation from BDS in this draft. As Betty was saying, like you have the option to play 1-3-1. One, one. You have, in theory, a lot of the stronger sides in that regard. So you should be able to get the control you need if you can start out this early game well and shut down a lot of those plays from Fnaf. Now, Sheo is no stranger to invading. Uh, when you have this type of pressure that BDS have, Talia can very easily get pushed in the early two versus two. The Zaya versus uh, Zeri in the early game should enable you to get the push in the early two versus two. Uh, Yasuo versus Twisted Fate is a little bit more of a mixed bag. Once you get level two on the Yasuo is when you become a lot more dangerous than the one versus one. But at level one, Yasuo isn't that threatening. But you have to be cautious as a TF because if you push in too early, you then set yourself up for failure. Um, so. We'll see how aggressively Oscar Rennan approaches the lane, but I think BDS have a lot of advantages in the early laning phase. I'm very curious as to how Sheo utilizes that. Are they going to be looking to try and attack that bot side of the map? Are they instead going to prioritize trying to play through these two solo laners? Because from Fnatic's perspective, their best lane to play through is top. You have the best setup, thanks to the Twisted Fate CC, combined with the fact that you have the Poppy, perhaps a little low in damage, but you're kind of getting an example of what I was talking about earlier. Starting with the E level 1 does give you a bit of trading power, but especially once you get that Q through is when you start to get a lot more control over that laning phase. I think as well, just as you say for Fnatic, the option to go top is there. The option to play around Jun in this bottom side as well is massive. The uh, opportunity, when you get the ultimate available, makes it very difficult for the Rakan to try and escape. Even if the Rakan tries to engage, you've got the Q to interrupt, you can get the crash down. So there are plenty of options here for Fnatic, but a huge amount of that is going to be, hey, we need to try and work together. So I wouldn't be surprised to see Sheo, as you already see the wards that's placed on towards the Raptors, trying to track where Razark is as this game goes on and making sure he can match wherever the They're already threatening up. a dive, top lane. Yeah, a couple of pings coming out around that red buff as well. Razzle not spotted yet. Taking he might just beeline. work his way all the way towards the top lane, as you say, Betty. Great awareness from Razork there, because as we're talking about it, he's going to start off by doing his Krugs, and he's in a position to be able to mitigate the dive. Oscar Rinin recognizes the position that he's in, but Razork should be able to spot this out. Knock up from Adam. Oscar at 300 HP. Show can look for the jump across the wall. I don't know if he saw Razork, who is now finishing up the Krugs. He will see that the Krugs have been done, so now they know Razork's Waiting in the wings. Try and put the damage down onto the poppy here. Another knock-up onto Oscar, just trying to get him away from this wave. But it's not going to do too much yet. Chase continues on to Razzle. There's the stun, does still have his flash. Nuke on his way up from the mid lane. Razzle tries to dash back, flashes under the tower. Adam puts up a wind wall. And BDS get the summoner and get out. BDS going to be very happy with that. You've also cornered off. Razork into his topside jungle, so Sheo, I think we'll try and seal away some of these camps. Nuke had push in mid, as you highlighted, Medics, who could have moved up into this top half of the map. I don't think he realizes that he's on a war. Uh, he though. definitely doesn't, but I don't think Razork is healthy enough to contest it anyway. Sheo realizes that Razork is going to go back to base and he's going to take away the enemy jungle. Ultimately, great play from Sheo. Obviously, a lot of time committed to this top side of the map, but a lot of this comes back to the pressure that he has in mid lane thanks to Nuke, just keeping the wave pushed in. The fact that they have push in top lane, and I was expecting Ice and LeBron to have control over that early bot side, but whether they've conceded or whether or not it's a matter of Noah and Jun, the reality is that they're playing on the safe side of the map. They know the priority is on the top side, and BDS already starting to find these very small advantages, but uh, Sheo not overstaying his welcome, trying to steal the red as well. Yeah, I'm kind of looking at where Adam's wave is, though. I think he'll need to get this crash, because the only thing that realistically Razor can do right now is clear his red and go into that top side. Now, the ward will spot out that Razork is there, which is why you're seeing Shale move up here to try and cover Adam as he shoves in this wave. Or at least keeps a freeze for himself, which would be nice. Shale also knows this hasn't been warded recently because Oscar Winning's been stuck in the lane, so it would have had to be Razork warding on the way out, but he was never able to get into that position. So just to make sure that Adam can get the push out, then we'll go across towards his blue. Razork works his way down towards the bottom side of the map. There is a possibility of an early Drake if he wants it, but I think he's just going to target that Scuttle Crab instead. You're seeing a great example of why this matchup is so difficult for the Twisted Fate, and Adam is playing it very well. Even if the goal difference doesn't look that dramatic, it's only going to get harder for the TF. Razork, though, knowing that Sheo should still be around the top side of the map, is looking to put pressure on the bot side, but there's no realistic dive here. He's likely just going to convert this pressure into a Dragon. Nuke going to use his control of a mid to provide safety for Sheo on the top side of the map. And ultimately, it's going to be a top side favored for BDS, while bot side gaining small advantages uh, for Noah and Jun, simply because they know that their jungler isn't in the area. I'm curious how much pressure BDS want to now turn into this top half, though, because just hit six for Nuke, he's just reset, picked up some boots for himself. He can start to roam, and I like the adaptation of taking the boots early here. So you're like, oh, I can actually get into top lane, zone off Oscar in and with my ultimate, and make sure he's going to be uncomfortable. So I wouldn't be surprised to see BDS really turn up the heat on Oscar in this top zone now. 
bot side camps are now respawning for Shea, so he's going to be forced to reset, go back to the bot side of the map. But the Dragon not actually being secured yet. This does give an opportunity for BDS to start playing towards that objective. Adam, of course, yet to use his TP, but playing the laning phase incredibly well. You see that advantage really starting to mount. He created a slow push towards him, which meant that Oscar Renin, in order to get those last hits, would be forced to overextend and... He's just losing more and more at a time. The only reason why this deficit isn't greater is thanks to the passive of yep. the Twisted Fate, keeping that gold a little bit better. Humanoid going to deny the, the healing plant away from anyone on the side of BDS. And ultimately, I'm impressed with what BDS have been able to do in the early game. Start mounting into a significant gold lead, but in terms of the pressure, they're using, utilizing it well within the first six minutes of the game. I also like the vision control that Fnatic have set up. So they did have the Skull Crab there, which get them control on bot side. They've also got a ward in behind. BDS's bot lane turret, and then the war placed by Humanoid. They basically have all their angles covered for, hey, where is Sheil, or where is Nuke, as they start to roam around the map. So keeping themselves safe, but BDS, using that pressure on the bottom side and the control they had, are going to start off this dragon. Noop did reset, though, so I'm curious how much attention Fnatic want to put to this. Yeah, Noop has no TP. Jun and Noah coming in to join the fight. Adam TPs to the top lane, and Fnatic might just look for the fight afterwards, but BDS can dash out across the back wall. Fnatic couldn't get there in time, couldn't collapse quickly enough to utilize their numbers advantage. Razor trying to step in here. Lobov Le Le realizes that's a possibility and dissuades the enemy jungler from going any deeper. Ultimately though, great control and great utilization of pressure from the lanes. Sheo is exactly where he needs to be and his laners are playing to accommodate for what he wants to do on the map. Adam, now in a good position, forces the ghost out from Oscar. He's going to be happy with that trade. And ultimately, very little to criticize on the side of BDS in terms of how they are playing this early game. Of course, we talked a lot in terms of their draft, how they want to try and leverage Nuke on this global. We've seen Chovy is one of the best examples in the world at how to utilize the Talia ultimate to cut off objectives to help secure them. And we know that BDS can be a very objective-focused team, along with how you can use this Talia to collapse on side lanes. So they want to keep this pace up, hold on to the advantage that they have for the time being, set up Yasuo to be this side lane threat, while also being able to bring value to the team fights later on. Yeah, and I think if you're Shero, as you reset here, you go into your top side, you then try and put some pressure onto Oscar Rinnan because grubs are coming up in 90 seconds. If you can get six grubs when you have side lane threats in the form of something like a Yasuo or even a Talia, it just helps accelerate. You can get some of those early plates, you can start to put Fnatic Speaking a little of... further in terms of gold. Nuke here, there's the Weaver's Wall, no Ghost on Oscar Riddin, burns the Flash, early doors, locks the stun card, but he's locked up with the last breath, and the chase continues, Destiny away from Oscar Riddin, and he will escape! Well played by the Fnatic top to get his way out of a sticky situation. I will say, uh, I think Adam used his ultimate too early, he yep. didn't actually get the maximum damage out of the, uh, the, the W from the Talia. Fnatic now have their eyes on the bot lane. I don't know if they're going to be able to pull a dive off, though. Ice playing very respectfully. Going to concede the farm, but he knows that his jungle is in the area. Oscar Renin, well played, recognizes that all of the CC has been used, can use that Twisted Fate to get away, but ultimately the damage has been done. Plate secured for Adam. The as CS continues to mount in his favor. And what, that's nearly a 900 gold lead now for Adam. Yeah, and that's the thing is, Oscar Renin kind of needed to use that ult to get back to lane. Cancelled his reset right before that play happened topside as well, so didn't get to go back and spend money. So very vulnerable now, loses a massive wave on that top side. So he is very, very far behind it all. Humanoid, Ooh, that's nice, nice interrupt to make sure that Nuke actually can't come the Look reset. Look at how awkward the wave is in mid as well. That's slow pushing towards Humanoid. Nuke now has to overstay in mid lane. So he's going to have to get some assistance to help push this out. And fortunately for him, Sheo is here to assist. Adam's here too. Humanoid's going to get knocked up. No last breath. There's the Glacial Prison though. Humanoid trying to dash away, uses the flash and will escape. Summoner's burnt for the Fnatic top and mid. Nuke now looking for that reset. Shea is going to pass towards the top side and perhaps has his eyes on the grubs. I think that's it, especially when you start to move Labrov up as well. You can commit a lot of members to this. Labrov is just hovering in river, trying to spot out exactly where Jun is. So then there's no play on his eye in the bot lane, but he can be in position if Fnatic try to contest on grubs, but they're just going to back away. They know they're too low. I mean, BDS just did everything right there, yeah. you know? The fact that Sheo and Adam made their way into mid, knowing that they could translate that pressure or push into control over the grubs. And then look, he moves back to top and he catches that entire wave. Right now, the control over the waves from BDS across the board is looking very good in terms of this early game. But I will say that Overall, BDS, discipline is often what I attribute to this team. Obviously, when we think back to last split, Adam wasn't a part of the roster when they were actually competing in these upper bracket. They did make that replacement. Um, 
now coming back in, seeing this level of discipline is exactly what you want to see from this team. But can they translate that? Because sometimes they are not the best at holding on to a lead and convert it into a victory. We're going to shove back here. LeBob looking for the knockoff as well. Jun on his way to join the party. Empress Divide not available for the Azir. And there's that good discipline you were talking about. They don't try and all in. They don't end up using the ultimate from Labrov. They're just like, cool, we get the chunk onto Humanoid. We don't know where any members of Fnatic are. Let's just try and make sure we can get out of this with uh, now the advantage we picked up. This unlocks Nuke again as that ultimate becomes available and he can start to play on the map again. The only thing is a lot of that vision set up from Fnatic is now going to be able to spot exactly where Shale is. I think that's the big problem, is you're going to open up now Razork to say, hey, look, we know Shao has to be on top side because he hasn't shown any of these wards. Maybe we can go for a play on boss, but Shale is now spot on the ward on top. So they definitely have all the information. It's nicely done by Jun while the top play was happening. Managed to get himself in there, get those wards deep, and with a Drake up in 30 seconds time as well, it gives you that awareness of how BDS are moving for what would be their second dragon of the game. Oscar in and just trading with Shao here. Razzle on his way. Nukes coming across as well, though. There's the Weaver's wall, and Oscar in is still no flash. Pops the ghost early on. There's the knockup. Steel Tempers. The seismic shot doesn't even get the knock need to get the knockback as BDS get their first kill. Emperor's divide. Shao tanking the tower first. Razzle's gonna knock him back. Humanoid dies for it. But it's a 2 for one trade so far, another seismic shove into the knockout with the Steel Tempers, and it's 3 for 1 for BDS. BDS come alive in the early game against Fnatic. What used to be a team that would only look for dragons is now diving side lane terrors 3v3 against Fnatic, and they are looking clean as they do it. Great punish from BDS. It was Oscar Rinnan that overstayed his welcome. He didn't respect Nuke's ability to collapse with the ultimate. And then they just turned it into a three versus two, into a three versus two, into a two versus one. Always leveraging the numbers advantage and coming out on top. We look back at this play and Oscar Rinnan, he's ultimately just overstaying when he shouldn't be. Yeah, the fact you have Nuke on the roam, we already touched on it. This was the advantage they picked up from getting that play onto Humanoid early. They immediately pick off Oscar Rinnan. And then Humanoid tries to make the play, and it is nice, but no one's actually really hit him yet to actually tank the terror aggro. And then Razork does secure the kill into Shale as soon as that aggro is picked up. But then this is just clean from Nukes. The flick back sets up perfectly for Adam to slice and dice his way through. It was a really nice glacial prison as well from yeah. Shale as the Emperor's Divide came in to lock Humanoid down as he dived into the enemy team. And BDS now 3,000 gold ahead. They have a 2,000 gold lead on Adam in the top lane. And before this series, we asked, where is one of the key weak points for Fnatic? Where can they lose the game? And one of the key factors was, well, if Adam gets ahead of Oscar winning, that's going to be a challenge. And the problem for Fnatic is you don't have any way to lessen that gap because you don't have dragons. You don't have control over objectives. So what are usually your fallbacks for a composition like this, where, hey, our four on the bottom side are really strong and we look for a team fight, but BDS don't have to team fight you. They have two dragons. They have opened up the map. Adam is only getting further ahead now with more terror plates, and you are then isolated in these 1v1s. And one of the big character arcs we've seen from BDS over the course of this split is how good they've actually become a macro, how well they are playing sides, but Adam is going to have to play this one. He gets the knockup. Adam has no flash. Shao has worked his way into this bot side bush, and Fnatic don't overextend for it. LeBob was coming across as well, so it would have ended up being a 3v2 if the fight continued. Eight plates to one for BDS. Fnatic have thrived in fighting, but BDS haven't really given them the opportunity so far this game. Maybe they're looking for one here. Shale still unspotted. I will remind you guys that Sejuani, very difficult to catch out. John with the Magnet Storm. He manages to flash away. Good knockback with the Keeper's Verdict as well as now Adam's on the front line. Razzle diving in and Adam falls. Fnatic starts to turn things in their favor as the ties perhaps are going on their side. LeBrov dives in, gets the charm. The knockup, the roots on Razzle is enough. Ice with a good Feather Storm gets himself out of dodge. The TP was invested, but Nuke was stopped by Oscar winning in the top lane. BDS. Bit of a questionable execution, holding on to the Sejuani oh. ultimate for so long, the setup for the Astral Weaver's ultimate. Wall the top lane being used as well. Nuke is looking for Oscar Rin and Khan does find him in the 1v1, but it's 1v1 trade. Fnatic Force, BDS back in the bot lane. I mean, you look at that goal gap in the top lane, it was 2k earlier, dropped to 1.5. Oscar Rin going to be happy to get that trade, and Fnatic all of a sudden looking a lot more alive here in this game. We talked about how BDS can sometimes overforce these plays. The idea looked good, but the execution ended up falling short. And I think a lot of that was they were reliant on, hey, we have that TP advantage for Nuke. We can try and play for that. But Nuke overextends in that side lane, doesn't get out of range of Oscar in or invest that TP early enough. And the whole plan kind of falls apart. And yes, you get the 1v1 kill on the top side, but Nuke had a bounty. So yep. it actually ends up being a positive for Oscar Rinnan because he gets a bit of extra gold and manages to finish his shift. 
And now BDS will enter back onto this top side, at least to pick up the Rift Herald. And if you can crack open mid, this is definitely going to secure a bit of an advantage in this game. Importantly for Fnatic, Noah has the most gold in the game, or at least did a couple of seconds ago. If you can get this Zeri to two, three items, he can carry a fight. So we look at how this starts, and Sheo utilizing his Q to create the knockup for the asshole ultimate. Doesn't actually connect onto Noah, who's completely safe. Then the ultimate from Sejuani actually connects onto Razork, and now they've got nothing left. Good ulti from Razork knocks away a member, creating a two versus three, but then Ice joins the fray. And at this point, BDS, while they do get a kill, they're kind of forced to retreat because they know how threatening Humanoid is. And the amount of health that Noah has meant that so many resources going into Jun, and the fact that Fnatic were able to find a one-for-one one in a 3k gold deficit is definitely a great position to be, on top of the fact that that TP also got interrupted on the top side. Yeah, and the fact that it's out in the falls as well is massive because it just gives you so much control down in the spot side. But you'll see here, right, backing easy ward, and Nuke just needed to back away. He ended up putting plane up, trying to punish Oscar in, and now does end up getting the kill in the end, as you said. Use the Weaver's Wall now in a second to just follow up on Oscar in, as Oscar in flashes away from the boulder. But I do think uh, Nuke, if he'd been able to get in the position, would have been all right. Oh, just barely got I mean, it's well played by Nuke in the end, but it feels a bit greedy, firstly with the back position, and then also with going for the kill. Uh, and it does give some gold back to Fnatic, about 2,500 gold, the lead for BDS. They used Rift Herald in the bot lane to charge in, mid lane. I think they used it mid and then drove it bot, actually, looking at because the mid lane tower was relatively healthy before we went into that replay. And I think the reason they did it is because they know Noah has no flash from the last play. So if you can push in that bot side with Adam, push in top with Nuke, Weaver's Wall across the mid lane, you can isolate Fnatic from their mid lane tower and trying to take that in a few minutes. But Dragon, in a minute's time, and with the position that you have on the map, it feels very BDS favored, but again, you don't even have to commit to this as BDS if you don't want to. You can just commit for mid lane tower instead and pick that one. Oh, is it gone? Is that actually? Uh, mid, mid lane tier one went. I think they yeah, held exactly. charged in they and did. then drove it to drove the bot lane gotcha, fair. to, uh, to yeah. take both those towers. So BDS could commit for the tier two if they wanted to try and crack open the map even more, but I think the dragon a more likely target. In terms of item, both the mid laners have finished their first. Haunting guys as well for both of them. Humanoid, you know, about 800 gold ahead. He has an extra blasting wand. AD carries though, Noah, Runans and Static complete. Doesn't have the flash, but does have the lightning crash. Summoners available for ice. I will say, I feel like the biggest strength of BDS's comp right now is how strong Nuke and Adam are. And I think that they should just try and utilize the map pressure to control this dragon rather than trying to force a fight. Even though they do have an advantage, I think that a 5v5 is probably one of the better scenarios that Fnatic can find themselves in to actually win, because again, their composition is very front to back. They have the Poppy ultimate to create a numbers advantage within a big 5v5. They have so much utility provided by Jun. On top of the range, it could be difficult if the right targets aren't connected by that CC in order to actually lock down Noah and Humanoid. So I think what BDS is doing right now, I prefer much more. Just utilize the pressure that you have on the map to Keep Fnatic away from the Dragon entirely, secure it completely uncontested, and just keep chipping away at these towers. Yeah, I do think this was a bit of a mistake from Fnatic, though, where they end up showing Humanoid too early on the top side. So BDS are able to go, right, well, we can have our cake and eat it too. Yep. We can get Dragon and play on the mid wave. And, and play on the bot wave. Play on the bot wave as well, but that will back away. They have to be a little bit careful, because I don't think they've spotted on the bottom side is just that little ward that's in behind Yeah, just BDS in the bot lane well. bush. Yeah. So they do have to be a little bit careful there. No TP is going to come down, though. Only Humanoid running TP, remember, the destiny enough for Oscar Villain to move himself around the map. It's also a threat for BDS later if they do commit to more of a split push style that the Twisted Fate can join a fight very quickly, as can the Talia. So we might end up seeing, you know, just full investment into trying to play on those side lanes. 2,000 gold to lead for BDS. Three dragons to nil, six grubs to nil. And Fnatic are building up towards those second items. From here, expect to see the game slow down a little bit. BDS likely to look for some topside vision to allow Adam to push up, but really we are waiting for that next Drake to spawn. Yeah, I think it's going to be uh, try and shove in mid and then establish that vision, yep. but I think I'd actually probably see them put that vision into Nuke a little bit more, because I think Nuke is a little bit more vulnerable on the side, and especially because they've spotted Oscar in on the bot side, they want to try and keep him in check. Where's Noah going? Yeah, going on top now. here. Stands in the bush. 
try and dash away. That's the safety of the Zeri. Thought maybe he'd take a shortcut through the jungle, but wise enough not to do that. With this ward, he would have spotted them walking in, so would have been a, a, a big whoopsie if no one had got caught out there. Ultimately, I think what BDS is doing is the correct play. Just keep control of a mid, move into top side, start threatening that tower, and they don't have anyone catching bot right now, which looks like that's going to be Nuke's job, and they'll do the exact same thing on the bot side of the map. And basically, they just keep playing through mid into bot, mid into top, and they just... Uh, suffocate Fnatic out of their jungle, you keep stealing away camps, you create a larger lead, and it is very, like, a slow and methodical death, in a sense, because the pressure falls on Fnatic as they realize that their vision is being suffocated, that BDS could start Baron at any point, and that becomes the, the part that forces Fnatic into a mistake. I do think, though, that was the mistake by BDS, was not actually catching bot wave. I think you can keep all three waves shoved in pretty aggressively, and then, as Vedi is saying, like, move those shifts from lane to lane, but I think you need all three lanes to be in that position, so basically you can move Talia to mid to shift your three members top, and then look for the play on the terror, and just keep the pressure up at all points in time but i think um bds letting that bot wave go now buys more time for fanatic before the next dragon comes i think the only reason why you would bring five up top side is because it increases the threat of the baron if you have one person bot then the possibility is slightly lower uh, and Fnatic are just leveraging their numbers Bottom now to try and... Just walking in, put the control ward in, they spot LeBrov, Sheo diving forward, Adam across the wall as well as to try and lock up Humanoid. He's stunned, gets the Empress to buy down, but a good quickness from LeBrov means Humanoid has to flash the wall. Noah gonna dash away as well, another stun on Sheo, Adam kills off Humanoid, and he's gonna look for more as Noah's isolated with the enemy top, and Adam brings down the guillotine. Jun tries to dash away, but BDS will not let him escape today. Three for naught and a Baron to boot. I mean, BDS find the fight that they were looking for that's forced by Fnatic. Nuke continues the hunt as he's caught. Oscar Rinnan isolated. Ghost away from Oscar Rinnan, but where are you going, fam? <laughs> Nowhere really for him to get out of that. Nuke gets his vengeance for the one for one earlier. Another kill to BDS. A Baron and a minute and a half before the Infernal Soul. And this was great play coming through from BDS. Everyone thinks that they caught Labra, but he's very tanky. Not able to go down, and then it's just a follow-up from that from the Rakan. Jumps in onto everyone, buys the time that they need. Nuke's able to come back in, and from that point on, Fnatic have basically used everything in the kitchen sink to try and make things happen. And when Zeri is falling at the back, they just don't have the consistent damage they need with Oscar in this far behind. And BDS just able to sweep the fight. Ultimately, BDS's target selection was just great there. So much space for Adam and Lebrov to just kind of play the fight exactly as they wanted. And you can see the damage that Adam is doing on this Yasuo. A champion I think no one really expected. We're going to have to keep finding names to add on to his gods acronym at this rate. But uh, great start to... Uh, God God. It's a new English drill artist. Yeah. Yeah. You've heard of Banksy. You've heard of Stormzy. Yeah. Now Godzy. Uh, BDS find themselves in a commanding position 23 minutes in. They had a solid early game. And now they're looking to siege Fnatic. Glacial Prison's gonna land. Humanoid locked up for the moment. Adam stunned. There's the Empress Divide. Knocks Sheo under the tower. Sheo tanking for days, and Humanoid will pay for it with his life. One for one as it's a jungler for a mid lane trade. Adam eats a stun card. Nuke and Lebrov clearing out vision. Can look for more. Bound up minion wave. Still a long way away for BDS in this bot lane. Bit of an awkward state for BDS just because they did abandon mid in order to collapse in the fight, expecting it to be something bigger. So Nuke kind of wasted a little bit of his own time trying to move from mid over to bot, but now he's caught that wave. They're going to begin the pressure. Now they're already setting up this 4-1 this approach, or I guess 3-1 in this situation, given that they did lose their jungler. The BDS likes to, to play over-investing numbers on one side of the map to guarantee an objective and control. TP in behind, though. They want to get Oscar, Oscar in, in here. Ice has the Feather Storm, doesn't use it initially. There's the stun as well from Mazlock into the wall. Blast Cone out. Ice still holding on to that ultimate, pulls the feathers back, the charm came in from Lebrov and Oscar Rinnan is melted by Nuke and Adam. Lightning crash out from nowhere, everything on him in this team fight. Humanoid can look for an Empress Divide, but it's not up yet. The fight will have to last for an absolute age and BDS will not let it do so. BDS find another and now Infernal Soul is their prize. Man, ice does not melt under pressure. That man the entire time chilling as I thought he was going to go down, but holds on to the ultimate, starts to turn around and fight back as Lavrov comes through and they get the pick onto two members and immediately that soul for BDS off the back of this. We look back at the fight and it's another force from Fnatic. They think they found a pick onto Ice, but he really just stares him down. He's not worried. He has the ultimate available while his cleanse is enough. He doesn't care. He plays at the very limits and he realizes, all right, I've tested my limits enough. I'll play safer. Once the wall comes down, he knows that he's safe to approach and assist his team in securing that kill, which goes over to Adam. BDS punishing the aggression from Fnatic. They felt desperate over the last five minutes. 
But BDS, they've held calm under the pressure, under the desperation from Fnatic's force fights, and they've shut them down at every turn. Mercurial Simits are now complete on Adam as well. Going for a little bit of safety alongside that damage. 7,000 gold, the lead for BDS. And although I think some people saw BDS winning this series, I don't think we saw the first game being this convincing from them. Fnatic have got four kills across the course of it. One of it was because BDS overinvested on a bot lane play. I really haven't found their tempo yet in this game. They're suffering from whiplashes. Chun, X flashes back. The wave coming in. No Baron buff for BDS. Two and a half minutes before it spawns again. Keeper's verdict. Charged up by Razork, helicoptering, but can't find it. There's the Weaver's Wall from Nuke as he forces oh, Oscar in their way. Razork on the wrong side of the wall, but he has a Hex Flash to escape to the safety of his teammates. But how safe will they be over the next couple of minutes? Another tower falls. BDS are doing it by the numbers. They've taken six and have yet to crack that inhibitor line. I mean, there's no need to rush things at this rate. Sure, there's always a scaling element on the side of Fnatic that you have to be concerned about. Uh, Noah, three items, but... Can he really play the game? <laughs> I just look at what BDS is doing and how strong this Yasuo is. Windwall does so much to mitigate the impact that Zeri can have in a fight. And BDS are just kind of... I don't want to say single target, but that's kind of how they're playing a lot of the fights. They just focus one target, then turn their attention to the next. And, and it's not this kind of chaotic brawl where they're dividing and conquering, where there's half the, the team focusing the back line while the other half focuses the front line. They just utilize their power to catch a single member off, and then they use their utility to chase the rest of Fnatic down. And it's being incredibly well done. Nuke, we haven't commented much on it, but his wars in these fights have also been very, very impactful, right? And so every single member of BDS is really stepping up in this first game. Clean control in the early game, and as I said, a single blip is all we've really seen from them, but this has been an flawless game from the side of BDS. And the thing was, the only way I really saw Fnatic... Ooh, there's Noah, pops away, coming back into this, was a big team fight with their four members, right? It's Jun goes in, you get a massive ultimate from Humanoid, Noah pops off at his ult and just shreds people in an AoE, but with uh, the soul picked up for BDS, with how strong Ice is and how strong Nuke is, that feels pretty much impossible at this stage. Fnatic, they need to find some miracle pick after pick to slowly claw their way back into this. And you can see the difference in map state between the teams just by their trinkets. Four Oracle's alterations for BDS. They are about stepping in and denying vision. Fnatic have gone for three far side alterations because they know they can't step in to get any of that vision. Instead, they have to play from range. They have to look to just check bushes with those trinkets instead of face checking them themselves. Without a dedicated tank as well. I mean, Razok is tanky, but it's not Kasante or something for Oscar in it. becomes even harder to face check because you can always just be locked up by BDS. They're looking for Adam in the bot lane, but he has a control ward to keep him safe. Fnatic was seen pathing down towards this bottom side. Eight seconds on the Baron. BDS have total control of the top side of the map. So look at Adam now. He's going back to base. I wonder if he has... I don't think he'll have enough gold to just pick up a GA straight, but BDS have full vision control over the top control sides. Wards. That's He's what just a coach get likes control to see. Wards, all right. <laughs> so uh, now Fnatic feel pressured under their lack of information around the Baron. They're using their numbers to force their way into the river. They know that they should have five versus four, so BDS is respecting that. Sheo, has he overstepped? Yeah. against the wall. There's the Weaver's Wall from Nuke, because BDS might be looking for this fight. LeBrock tried to get the charm in. He gets Noah on the back line, but he's locked up. And he'll be taken out. Fnatic find a pick, as perhaps Sheo was the one being caught out. I have to question the discipline here from BDS. They know that they're at a numbers disadvantage. Sheo oversteps. Now Fnatic begin the Baron. No Emperor's Divide, no Keeper's Verdict, no Destiny. Noah still has the Lightning Crash and both his thumbs. Humanoid Force to dash away has the Flash. Ice has a Feather Storm. Damage on towards the top side as Nuke is locked up and Nuke gets one. And Razzle falls second. Sheo diving in alongside Adam. They're looking for Noah, but they can't quite find him yet. The Cleanse is already revert. He still has the Flash. It's all on Noah. To take down Ice. Adam and Nuke. He gets one, but he can't get more. Ice now chasing Oscar in and away. Oscar should have the move speed to escape. Cleanse away by Ice, but I don't think he gets in range. Just can't quite clip him with the feathers, but... Still, BDS have to come out on top in the 4v5, and that's just how far the head they are at the moment. It looked a little bit dicey, but now BDS, they're the ones that will get the Baron off the back of this. The Infernal Soul and Yasuo, they should be able to tank through this. In an ideal world, their Sejuani comes back alive as well. Are they going to hold? Are they going to wait? I think a risk of TPs in if you Man. hold too long might be a little bit too great. They also want to be in position for the Elder Dragon, which does make sense. 50 seconds until that spawns. Get back to base. The Brov likely going to drop what wards he can before re resetting himself. But initially, 
misplay there from VDS. Fnatic, it makes a lot of sense that they would then try to force the objective knowing that they have a numbers advantage, but the reality is, as Dagda highlighted, the goal difference is just too big. And Fnatic, even though they have a numbers advantage, it's not enough to turn the fight significantly in their favor. And also, I just bought a full rapid fire cannon off that last fight. So, what was already a disaster is now a 5v5, and I just got significantly stronger. Ultimately, though, Fnatic, by creating that element of chaos, have given themselves an opportunity to steal this Elder. And if they can steal it, then the game becomes very different. Definitely does. Noah still has his Flash, so does Humanoid. No summoners for Ice or Adam apart from that TP, but it doesn't really matter. Wind wall already situation. used. LeBrov's gonna dash across the wall. There's the Wind Wall down, as you say, from Adam. Jun trying to keep LeBrov at bay. The quickness, a possibility here. Sheo stepping into the pit. Fnatic looking at their last chance in this game to win it out. Nuke looking for that flank. Weaver's Wall, his priority. Not back on Shea. Weaver's Wall as Adam dives in. The seismic shove locks Oscar in in place. Ice with a feather storm. LeBrov with the charm. And those feathers are going to get ripped through the heart of Fnatic. Beautiful team fighting from BDS. A 5 for 0 oh, ace. And they look for the base. Fnatic may have put up a fight, but in the end, BDS will shut the door in their face. They move towards the Nexus, and they move us towards game number two. And what a dominant statement from BDS. The only moments Fnatic were in it were misplays from BDS. Apart from that, they controlled the map. They got every neutral objective they could. And in 32 minutes, they will wipe Fnatic off the face of the rift. It's 1-0 for BDS, they're two away from MSI. BDS with a convincing game one. Definitely a few blips, but ultimately an overall solid performance. Impressive stuff. Could this be the shift in BDS that we've been waiting for after all this time? A team that has often been defined as being predictable, standard, one-dimensional, showing a few different shades in this game. I will say though, the thing that brought them back was the team fighting. So maybe we're still in the same yeah, boss. But they won the team fights because they were ahead, which is the macro doctor. Come on, give them credit where we can. Anyway, we're gonna go to a short break. We'll be back with game two of this series right after this. Even the biggest champ needs a break. I'm tired. Me too. So, uh, what do you think? On to the next one? Let's go. Come on. Hey, shouldn't you be on stage right now? Yummy. Hey, you got a pick. Tom Kent? What? I, I was not expecting this. Crazy off me that pink that secured you the win. How did you come up with it? Oh. Uh, I just listened to my gut. <laughs> <laughs> 